Today we're finally going to do the results for the perfumery competition which I ran a couple of months ago. So if you don't know about the perfumery competition, basically a couple of months ago I ran a competition on the channel where I sent out my raw materials list and I said that essentially you could submit an entry of a perfume as long as it contained raw materials in the list and then I went up and made all of the formulas which got submitted which are these 12 formulas you can see behind me and today we're going to go through them, smell all the entries and pick a winner. So before we get into smelling through the entries, I just wanted to say a really big thank you to everyone who participated in the competition. I think it's really great to share your perfumery formulas, especially in a competition like this, because it really helps to inspire other people, especially beginners who don't know where to start. So thank you for everyone who took part. Secondly, it was really nice to see a wide range of formulas and it was clear that uh, people who entered the competition had quite a breadth of different uh, perfumery experiences. For example, some formulas you could tell that they were quite basic and they were um, for someone who was quite a beginner, whereas others you could tell that the person who made them was a bit further along their journey in perfumery. And if you are one of those people who's a beginner or your formula didn't win the competition, then please do not feel disheartened. Um, I think it's great that you entered and I'll try to give some feedback where I can. And I think everyone who entered um, definitely has something to be proud of about their entry. Okay, so the way this is gonna work is I've laid out all of the perfumes in alphabetical order from the name of the person who submitted them. We're gonna go through um, from A to Z, so we're just going to do it alphabetically like that. And what I'm going to do is firstly smell the base note, which has already been left on the scent strip for a week. And then we're going to go and actually dip a new scent strip and smell the top note. So I'm going to give you both the base note region and the top note region, because obviously with a perfume, if we were just going to judge it by the top note, that wouldn't be um, the most fair way to judge it, because actually a lot of the skill in perfumery is making sure that your mid and base notes and the whole uh, profile of the perfume over time, that those smell good too. So we're going to go and make sure we look at the base notes and the top notes. I'm also going to show you the formula on the screen and we're going to have a look at that after I've done an initial smelling of it. So I want to smell it blind first, though of course I have already seen the formulas. But I'm going to smell it, try to describe what the smell uh, smells like, and then I'm going to go and look at the formula and point out anything that stands out to me. For example, if there's any unusual ingredients in there, um, unusual raw materials, or anything that I think the dosage of is a bit odd. So I'm going to do it like that. The formulas, I've rewritten them in formula to kind of standardize them because everyone sent their formulas in a different format. So it might be a bit confusing if I put all of the original formulas up on the screen. The other thing I'm going to do at the end of the video or alongside the video is I'm going to collate all of the formulas into a nice PDF document which you can go and download. That's going to be in the Discord group. So if you're not part of the Discord group, join the Discord and you'll be able to download a PDF of everyone's formula. And that way, um, I guess for anyone who entered, it's a bit of a souvenir for the competition and also for any beginners out there who are looking for inspiration, um, this would be a nice reference in order to go and look at all the formulas. So with all that said, let's get into it. So the first one is from Gothfield and there is no name for this perfume that I could see. It was just left untitled. And the comment alongside it was, so this came about from my girlfriend wanting a sweet and innocent smelling floral rose scent. She always likes my creations, but this perfume was the first scent I actually sold, so it will always have an extra special place in my heart. So, this is the base note for the perfume. And when I smell it, it's pretty pleasant. It's, it's quite sweet. Um, I would say it's quite sweet. And there's nothing too unusual going on here. There's nothing, um, you know, nothing too out of place. And I think it works It works quite nicely. It's just quite a sweet uh, candy floss kind of note, I would say. Then for the top note. So yeah, I think this is uh, pretty nice, actually. It's a good kind of, um, I don't know, it, it, it has a good perfumey smell. So you can definitely smell a lot of sweetness, but you can also uh, smell the kind of rosiness and the depth from that as well. So I think this is quite a nice attempt. So if we go and look at the formula, um, it's actually very simple. It's only got six raw materials 
And a lot of these raw materials are really quite uh, what you might call workhorse raw materials. So we've got Hedione, ISOE Super in there, and then we've got Galaxolide. So these are all really, really common. And what I noticed is we got quite a high dose of ethyl maltol, and that is that sweet note that I really smell. Um, and you can definitely notice the ethyl maltol in there. It's at 1.16%, which honestly I would say is pretty strong for ethyl maltol. You would definitely, uh, you could definitely get away with dosing it a lot lower and still notice the effect of it. Um, but maybe that was the effect that they wanted in this perfume to have quite a strong sweet candy floss note. And the other thing I noticed is they've got the Rose Jivco to give that rosy note. In my series on Rose, I looked at the Rose Jivco and I've got to say I love the Rose base. Um, I think it's amazing. Um, but it's also dosed very strongly in here. It's at 4.65%, um, which is quite a high level, especially because it's quite an expensive raw material. But it does go a long way in making the perfume have this kind of powerful, characteristic rose scent. So I think for such a simple formula, this uh, is a great way of adding a strong mid-note in it. And you can also tell that that does help the perfume kind of perform quite well as well. One thing that I did notice is it's lacking a strong characteristic top note, and there's no real problem with that. Um, if anything, it will help your perfume, I guess, stay more constant, a bit more linear over time. Um, but it would be interesting to see what would happen if maybe there was some kind of top note that could work quite well in this composition as well. Okay, so next we have a perfume by Green Slug, and this one is called Rose of the Woods. Quite a nice name. I like the name. Uh, it sounds good. So the comment for this one was, here is my entry for the competition. I really wanted to make a sweet fruity rose with woody complexity without being overly soapy. It starts off with a very sweet rose, but then transforms into a lovely warm woody goodness with a touch of vanilla and violet. It's more feminine leaning in the beginning, and then it settles down to a more unisex finish. I made this with pre-diluted materials at 10%, 1% for the sake of ease. It would ha it has nice longevity at 10%, but it would be even better at 20%, um, best given a few days to macerate. So indeed, this formula um, ends up actually the final concentration being 8.23% because of uh, some of those 1% things used. Okay, so firstly, we're going to smell the base note. Now, the base note on this, um, it's quite nice. Again, it's quite sweet, like the last one. However, I wouldn't say it's quite um, so overtly sweet in such a, a kind of <laughs> that strong ethyl maltol way. This is actually, it's much more vanilla-like in its sweetness. And it's not just that vanilla in there as well. It does have kind of a touch of violet and it still has a touch of rose in it. A nice overall, I quite like this base note. I think it's it's pretty nice. It's It's a good job of a sweet base note that's actually kind of well balanced with kind of clean musks and things as well. Um, so it, it smells sweet, but definitely not um, not way too sweet, you know, not kind of like sickly sweet. Anyway, so I like the base note on this one, to be honest. Okay, wow. So when we smell this, I really, I really love this perfume, actually. Um, what uh, the smell that I get is actually straight away is kind of very much a palm of violets or a, quite a violety kind of smell. But when you smell into it, you can also notice the rose in there as well. Um, but it has, it it just has this quite unique um, smell. It's, it's interesting because while it's based very much on rose, this perfume, it doesn't give me a rose smell. It gives me kind of a much more of a greener kind of rose with violets and I do get a lot of kind of complexity from it as well and also it's quite just a nice yummy smell and the cool thing about this is that even though the formula isn't very strong the perfume smells as though it is very strong it feels like you don't really need to make it that much more concentrated because it already does a good job of kind of projecting out and smelling like quite a nice intensity and the other thing that I noticed about this, which is really cool, is that this perfume um, actually lasts fairly well over time. It's pretty linear, which you could argue is uh, good or bad, depending on what you like. Um, in this case, it's quite good because the perfume has a characteristic smell, and it kind of actually manages to maintain the characteristic smell pretty well, and also maintain its strength pretty well, and it's quite a slow kind of fade into the mid and bass notes, um, without any sharp drop-offs in the smell, which I think is another good characteristic. 
So I'm a really big fan of this perfume. So if we go and look at the formula, um, when I looked at this, so it's quite a medium length formula, which is, I think that's quite nice because it shows it's simple. Um, they've kind of done the, um, the perfume in not so many steps that it's overly complex, but there's enough things in there to have been able to make it quite interesting as well. And the one thing which I found really interesting with this formula was the use of undecavertal. If you haven't smelled that, it's a green note, which I find usually quite um, green and piercing. It's quite a distinctive green note. And when I've used it myself, it's never really blended well into things. It's just kind of added this green note on the side. And in this formula, it's at 0.5%, which for undecavertal, I actually think is a reasonably uh, strong. It's, it's fairly strong. And I don't actually just notice that when I smell this, it doesn't really stand out, which goes to show um, that in this particular context, it's really blended in, in the way of kind of an accord. And I think that's what partially gives this um, kind of rose-based perfume its unique character, because it definitely doesn't smell like a traditional rose. It's got this uniqueness about it. And I think uh, the undecavertal in here must have some kind of effects in that. So I think this is a really cool use actually of um, mixing things together in unique ways. The other thing is, um, even though it smells like violets quite a lot, well, I was expecting there to be a lot of ionones in here, but when you actually go and look at the formula, you see that alpha ionone is only there at 0.15% in the final formula, which isn't crazy strong or anything, yet it does a really good job of giving a kind of a good, strong violet note in the perfume. So I think this is a really interesting formula. Um, I'm a big fan. Next up, we have a perfume by J-Man, and this one is Trendseeker V2. So, a description of the fragrance. This fragrance was designed to fix an issue with men's colognes, too sweet, too fruity, too musky, and not fresh. It was also designed to be a fairly easy formula that uses many of the most common materials a fragrance newbie might want to learn about, and many materials often hyped in men's fragrances, such as pineapple for Creeds of Entus, Schwann pepper in Dios Sauvage, and Cologne in Aqua di Gio. It's also designed to be a good, woodsy, aquatic, marine, uplifting, crisp, clean, dry, non-sweet men's cologne that's mature, elegant, and simple, without being simplistic. So that's quite a lot of like goals with this. Um, oh, and the other point is there's a few missing materials that I don't have. So Silvamber, Caronau, Magnoglan, Amberwood, Cascalone, uh, Ginger CO2, uh, the essential oil, Amber Extreme, and uh, Pineapple Robite and Chuan Pepper. So um, I guess that this formula may smell a bit different if it was made with the original materials. Though that said, um, in the competition, obviously, I have to just have the materials that I have, otherwise I can't make it. Um, so maybe in the future I'll get some of these materials, so we'll see. Anyway, let's go through the base note. So, for this perfume, I think the base note in this is really, really nice, actually. It is very fresh, gives you this kind of sea breeze note. It's got this aquatic note to it, but unlike a lot of the time when people use aquatic notes, I find it's quite easy for people to overdose them a bit too much and make them a bit too strong. In this, the aquatic notes have been dosed very well and they have been blended well and harmonized well with the more musky notes, and they come together to make a very kind of soft, clean, fresh, uh, relaxing bass note, which I think is really nicely put together. Okay. So next let's go and smell the top note. So for me, I don't really like the top note of this perfume quite so much. And for me, it's got a fairly earthy smell to it. Um, and a bit of, it's a little bit of a, a sharp smell as well. And it's not to say that it smells bad. Um, I definitely think that, you know, it's pretty fine as a perfume. Maybe it's just not so much to my taste. I think the earthiness probably comes from the cashmere that's inside of it. 
and there is this kind of um, there is kind of a something in the top note maybe kind of like quite a terpenic slightly camphoraceous side to it and again this is not necessarily bad it's just um, something that I don't really like so much about the perfume so yeah that's my view on the top note so looking at the formula I forgot about this, but yeah, of course there is some jasmine in this fragrance, and I think jasmine is a nice smell, uh, but I also think it's very difficult to use in a perfume. And I actually do think this is quite a good attempt at using jasmine because it's only at 0.0004% in this formula, and it's not actually too strong. Um, it's, it's okay, as in, in this particular formula, if you like... Uh, kind of an earthy note. If the whole idea of this perfume is to be an earthy perfume, then actually I think uh, they've done quite a good job at it in this in this case. Um, I think that maybe um, for me the um, the perfume just kind of smells like earthy notes, maybe and aquatic notes. Maybe that's a bit unfair, but at least uh, to begin with. Um, I think that maybe some other things could have been emphasized a bit better, like the pineapple, for example, and the ginger, the pink pepper, things like that, um, are not coming through so well. Or it is possible that actually it's those things even that's causing some of that um, sharpness in the top note. So I'm not entirely sure what it is um, that makes me not like the top note quite so much, um, because it is quite a complex formula. So I wouldn't be able to say by looking at it. But that said, in no way am I saying the top note is bad. I'm just kind of trying to give some constructive feedback here because overall, I think, as I say, the, the top note is still pretty well done here. And I certainly think for the right person, this would be a great perfume, especially if something earthy is what you want, then yeah, I think this is quite nice. So I think this is a really good kind of attempt at the perfume, if that makes sense. And especially the bass note. I really, really like the bass note. Okay, so next we have a perfume by Jesse Lewis. And this one is called So Real. He didn't uh, add any particular comments, uh, at least that I saw about the perfume. So we're just going to go straight in and smell it. So this one, the bass note. Now for me, it's pretty soapy, actually which I'm not the biggest fan of, to be honest. Um, it's it's fairly kind of, <laughs> I would say it's quite a soapy note. There's definitely some other stuff in there, but it's a bit non-distinct, you know, so I'm not entirely kind of sure what exactly is going on. Uh, let's go smell the top note. So the top note, um, definitely again, it's pretty soapy. It does actually smell as though I'm smelling a bar of soap. But there is a bit more to it because I also get a bit of a kind of slightly smoky note, um, maybe a slightly kind of leathery, deep, dark note to it as well. So this one's quite interesting because while this is probably not what I would really want, especially as a fine fragrance, personally, um, I think that this is interesting because maybe if you are going for, if specifically you were either going for a perfume with that has that kind of soapy character or something a bit more traditional, a bit more old fashioned, or you're making a perfume for a soap, then, you know, maybe this could be pretty good. So anyway, let's have a look at what's inside it. So this one, um, I look at it and the first thing I instantly see is it's got Cade oil in. And if you don't know, Cade oil is very strongly smoky note. And it's been dosed very low at only 0.02%, yet you can still smell it. Actually, I think the dosage of the Cade oil was done pretty well in this perfume because I think it gives just about the right strength to be able to give the effect that you're looking for, that dark smokiness, without going too strong. And it's really easy to do that with Cade oil. So I think that was definitely a good point for this. Aside from that, it does smell quite soapy, and I'll probably put that down to the Aldehyde C12MNA. Now, beyond that, it's got a general clean smell, um, but it's also kind of non-distinct. So I don't know if that was the idea for the perfume or if that just happened uh, by accident. There's a lot of other things in there, things like bergamot, um, hedione, lavender, dihydromersinol, citral, but they're not really showing through. They're kind of all blending together. So I guess with this one, um, part of it 
has to do with the intention behind the perfume. Um, I'd be interested to know kind of what the actual idea was behind this formula. Okay, so next we have a perfume by Kijaz, and this one is called No Cardamom. And the note was, from the raw materials list, I see no cardamom or eucalyptol, which are my favorite materials, so I'm motivated to make a simple, refreshing cardamom perfume formula from what we have without using perfume bases. I'll call it No Cardamom. Okay, right, so let's start with the base note. Now, the base note for this perfume, it's a little bit faint, which is a shame. I think it could be a bit stronger. But in terms of the actual smell, I quite like the smell of the base note. And that's because it's got this kind of... I would say it's a bit of a forest floor kind of smell, but it's not too thick and heavy like Pine Needle Absolute. It's interesting because it, there is a bit of a sweetness to it, which is nice. But overall, I would say it's it's got a dark side to it as well. It's got a little bit of a greenness to it. A bit of a woodiness, maybe you could say as well. And it's just quite a unique base note, I think, which is quite nice. And when I actually went to look at the formula, I found out that there's some Styrax Absolute in there. And I think it may be partially down to that that's giving it this kind of unique tone in the base note. But overall, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Then next with the top note. So this perfume was interesting because when I smelled it straight away, I pretty much liked the top note of this. Actually, I thought um, definitely, uh, yeah, I really like this top note. It's very much of a kind of uh, herbal or forest-like top note. It's quite green, and I do like those kind of scents, so I guess on a more subjective level, I quite like that. But I also think it's fairly well-balanced as well, which is nice. However, the complaint I have about this perfume is that um, the mid note, unfortunately, doesn't seem to be, at least to my liking, quite so good. And the mid note seems to be dominated by some kind of linalol uh, or like ethyl uh, linalol, that kind of thing, and that kind of smells. And it didn't really kind of project out so much. It's kind of like, I thought the top note was nice, but then it died down and the mid note wasn't so great. And then the base note was nice too, it was just a little bit faint. On the skin, it just kind of fell apart quite quickly. Though that said, it's hard because there's still kind of quite a unique smell in this perfume as well. It definitely doesn't smell like uh, many other perfumes I've smelled, but I do think it has been done quite well on a conceptual level. So when we go and look at the formula, we find the rosemary surprisingly has been dosed really high. And I think actually it's interesting. One of the best parts of this formula is that the top note makes the high dose of rosemary work and feel at home quite well initially. But I think the downfall of it is the lack of a real mid note to kind of carry the sweetness through into the mid region. Instead, we're left with kind of a lot of terpene notes. Um, and then, for example, that ethyl linalyl acetate. And I think those go to dominate the mid note uh, part of the perfume because there's nothing else. But on their own, they don't really give, um, let's say, a unique kind of uh, note to the perfume that um, that really supports it. Instead, they just kind of smell like, you know, eh. So I think maybe for this perfume, something like um, maybe a rose or another kind of floral mid note would really help maybe bring the base note and the top note together and kind of provide a continuity and structure. That said, I do like the concept with this perfume. I think it's um, I think it's got an, quite an unusual concept behind it, and usually with uh, perfumes that are more unusual, it's much harder to make them work because um, people use the raw materials that are commonly used because it's easy to use them. So when you start going away from that, it's actually much harder to make your composition successful. So I do think this is a pretty good attempt, especially at quite an unusual or more creative composition. Okay, so next we have a perfume by Larius, and this one is called Rosy Peach. So. As always, we'll start with the bass note. Now this one, the bass note, it's a little bit flat. I wouldn't say it's the best, to be honest. Um, and I would say maybe it's because it's not so soft or it's not kind of so well-rounded. And I'm not saying that the perfume's bad or anything like that. I'm just saying I don't really like it as much as maybe some of the other bass notes that I smelled here. Okay, and then for the top note, 
So I think the top note is actually much better for this. I think it pretty much does what it says on the tin. It smells like um, kind of rose mixed with peach. But I also think um, it's done fairly well. It doesn't just smell like plain old rose mixed with peach. I think it's actually done fairly elegantly. The only problem with this perfume is that it smells nice to begin with, but then it rapidly falls away into something that wasn't so nice. So my notes on it were, it smells good straight away with the rosy peach, but um, something goes, it must be one of the top notes. And then it's uh, left with this kind of linalol to vanillin smell. And that just, I guess, doesn't really anymore do what it was intended to do or do what the perfume was intended to do. And it's not a particularly amazing combination either. So I think um, with this perfume, the initial smell is very nice. It's just compositionally, it doesn't kind of work, if that makes sense, as in it doesn't work over time. Now, another thing that's interesting about this is I also tried it on the skin. I tried them all on the skin, actually. And on the skin, um, so for example, that last perfume, that one actually I felt went much worse on the skin, on the scent strip. This one I felt was better on the skin than the scent strip. When you put this one on the skin, um, it was funny because if you smelled right up close to your skin, it didn't smell so good. But as you got further away, it smelled good from a distance. So if anything, that's actually a good feature because when you're walking by someone, usually you smell their perfume from a distance, you don't actually go up to it and smell it close. Anyway, so the notes for this one are as follows. Here's my entry, I tried to keep it to as few materials as possible, as requested, while still building some accords. I list the rose peach separately um, in the one that I gave, so in his original formula, but the intent is for them to blend together in the fragrance. It's not as diffusive as I'd like, despite using lots of diffusive materials, so maybe someone could analyze why. So I actually thought being diffusive maybe wasn't so much the problem with this. Um, but maybe it was more the fact that it just doesn't perform over time. But anyway, if we do go look at the formula, what I notice is that, so there's some tangerine oil in there, which is probably what provides that initial sweetness, which brings everything together. And I assume it's the aldehyde C14 working with the tangerine oil, which gives a good basic peach accord. But I guess as soon as that tangerine oil is gone, because it's quite a top note, then the peach part falls apart. And then I guess everything kind of starts to fall apart a little bit. And there's also clearly the structure of a rose accord in there as well, I recognize from when we did the rose series quite recently. So, um, if I look at this, what I would firstly think is, well, I guess what we need to focus on is especially that peach accord, getting it to last a little bit longer. So I would recommend starting to look at things maybe like fructone, uh, maybe some ethyl maltol, things like that, that would be good to kind of prolong the fruity notes a little bit. And then with this one, it's hard to tell exactly what's going wrong. But given that um, in the Rose of the Woods perfume, there was also a similar rose accord used there, similar raw materials, but I guess in different ratios, maybe a good way to start kind of diagnosing this one would be try making the, um, using the same rose accord, so the rose materials for the rose accord in this perfume, maybe try to use the ratios in the Rose of the Woods perfume and then slot that in to this perfume and see how that affects it. Maybe that would help with the performance a little bit more. Then again, the question was also a bit about diffusive materials. So I assume, um, for example, they meant the iron the rose oxide, um, things like hedione there in there. Surely it should be diffusive, right? And to be honest, I do think the perfume does a good job of being diffusive. Um, but I guess there are also other diffusive materials you could add if you wanted. So for example, ambroxan maybe one to try. Um, maybe even some aldehydes as well, though I guess that does risk making it soapy, so that's always another thing. And then you could also try just increasing the strength a little bit as well. So overall, I think this one is definitely a work in progress. But um, I think, you know, it's a nice base to build on, but it probably wants diagnosing and working out uh, where it's falling short first before kind of increasing the complexity of it. Okay, so next we have a perfume by Matt J. Mateus. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. And again, this one didn't have a title. And the notes were, here's my entry. It's an attempt to capture and learn about a discontinued perfume I really like. I've altered the materials to fit your list and I think it still captures the same idea enough. It's a violet oris, citrusy, pink peppercorn, woody and sweet formula that I really like. And it's at 30% as well concentration, which is really quite strong. But anyway, if we go smell it, 
So the bass note, um, to me, it's interesting because it smells very coconutty. And maybe coconutty with a slight kind of hint of vanilla. Maybe a slight hint of like orris or something like that. But overall, it's a fairly coconutty smell, which um, surprised me because that's not listed. Then if we go actually smell it. So it is quite interesting, this. Um, it's definitely got kind of a unique smell about it, and it's, it is fairly diffusive. I can smell some pink pepper in there. But uh, the one thing about this to me that stands out is I think the citral is definitely a little bit too strong. Um, and you, citral is something that you can definitely smell in this perfume. And it almost goes to the point where the whole thing starts to smell a bit like citral with a touch of pink peppercorn. And also this kind of coconutty note that's in here too. So when I look at the formula, the citral is really strong in here. It's 1.2%, which I would say is too strong for citral, to be honest. Um, it's also above the IFRA limit. Um, so I don't know if that was intentional, but probably not the best. Um, and I think it does dominate. So if I was going to say anything about this perfume, I'd say definitely take down the citral levels. Then again, um, we've got that pink peppercorn. That's quite strong at 2.1%. So maybe that could be toned down a little bit. And then we've also got this methyl liotone in here, and I think that's what's causing a lot of this kind of coconut note, potentially. But that's not necessarily such a bad thing. Um, I just think, well, I, I was surprised that that dominates maybe the formula so much. Apart from that, though, I mean, you've got a lot of other things in here. And I think they all kind of must blend into each other because not a lot of the other uh, raw materials stand out particularly. And I think, to be honest, it's quite hard to kind of gauge uh, the rest of the perfume, what's going on, just because it's dominated by those few notes so much. So maybe I would try kind of like lowering some of those and then seeing how that changed it. But that said, it's an interesting composition, probably not uh, my favorite, probably not one that I would particularly go for. But then again, this is also trying to uh, recreate a specific perfume that this person liked. So I, you know, it depends what that actually smells like to begin with as well. So maybe they did quite a good job of it. Um, I have no idea. But it's certainly a little bit different and quite interesting. Next, we have a perfume by My Bad again, and this one's called Blue Jeans. So I assume that this one's meant to smell like Blue Jeans, and we'll start with the base note. So this one, I really actually like the base note on this perfume again. Um, I thought this had a really good base note. Very much musky, but it still had an element of freshness. It was fairly clean. And what really struck me about the base note of this perfume is it reminded me of when you go to a department store and you smell perfumes, and if you leave them on the scent strips for a few weeks, bring them home, and then you smell them, the base note of this smells really like something I would expect from one of those. And some people might say, oh, you know, it's better to have like niche perfumes and um, not commercial ones, but I'm actually a really big fan of commercial perfumes. I think they're really inspiring. I think they're some of the best perfumes you can get. And in this case, it really gives me that impression. I think there's a really good balance of kind of a slight woody sweetness and then a well-balanced range of musks all kind of put together and it still has an element of freshness as well. Um, I think the base note in this perfume is really, really good. And I think this would actually be a really interesting one to study the base note particularly of, just to kind of see a bit more how it's put together because I think it really smells like very professional, um, the way it's done, this one. So the top note for this perfume, I actually wasn't the biggest fan of, to be honest. Uh, again, it's not to say it's bad or anything, but it wasn't really to my taste. Um, Again, I don't know what the idea was behind it, but to me, it's probably not the kind of perfume like that I would choose personally. Um, it's just kind of, it's a bit, maybe it's a bit powdery, maybe it is a bit, um, maybe a bit kind of laundry-like. Maybe So maybe if you're um, trying to create the smell of jeans, then maybe this would be good. But overall, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of this uh, top note. So if we go and have a look at what's inside of it, so there's a mixture of things like bergamot, cedar wood, linalil acetate, and what else? Hoe wood oil, nutmeg. Maybe it's the nutmeg that I'm not liking so much, and the petit grain as well. So I think between these, 
they're kind of creating something that's a bit clean and powdery. And again, if you're going for a laundry-like smell, maybe that's uh, not a bad thing. But it's not to my personal taste. So this perfume my review is, I love the base note, I think it's great. Uh, but the, the top note, I probably would have uh, chosen something else. Okay, so next we have a perfume by Natio69, and this one is called Mint and Apple. And I think the idea behind this one is fairly simple. It's just trying to be a mint and apple perfume. So the base note for this one, um, I don't really like this, to be honest. It's just a very kind of nondescript, waxy kind of residue smell. It's almost as though, um, I don't know, I guess the base note is not, it's just maybe happened as much by accident as it's been constructed, and that's in no way kind of like a, you know, to say this perfume is bad, I think it definitely seems like quite a beginner attempt based on the construction of the formula. But I also think it, it definitely wants a bit more work. Then when I go smell the top note, so I think that the way this perfume was constructed, it seems like a lot of work was done more on the top note than the base note. And what you get is this kind of, it, I like the fact that it's green because I like green scents. Um, but objectively speaking, I have to say again, it's not constructed the best. So you get a strong smell of hexyl acetate. And while overall the things kind of blend together to create this kind of fruity green scent, you've kind of got like quite a sweetness coming through from some kind of ester notes. And then that's mixing in with kind of this peppermint, which is also does quite strongly. So it's giving you a bit of that um, very cooling, trigeminal kind of sensation. And I feel like Maybe the downfall of this is that there are firstly a lot of top notes in the perfume, so structurally it, it doesn't work that well because um, everything kind of is based around the start, but then after time the composition falls apart. But also um, there's a lot of very strong notes, so if we go and look at the formula we've got things like um, hexyl acetate, which is crazy strong, 3.5% of the formula, and then we've got uh, things like peppermint oil at 4%, which is like ridiculously strong for peppermint oil. And these raw materials, um, they're very powerful and they completely dominate the scent of the perfume. And honestly, I think these wanna be dosed like much, much, much lower. And then these wanna be kind of the, um, the garnishes as such on a proper perfume structure to give it um, character rather than trying to be the perfume structure. Now, I'm not uh, having a go at this person or anything because uh, when I started doing perfumery, I would make compositions like this as well. And it's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, and I think it's especially easy to wish that you could make a perfume out of kind of a, say, a smell you like, like say hexelastate, you think, you know, this is really cool. And I really completely understand that, um, but I think over time you kind of realize that in order to make the perfume work as a perfume that someone could wear, you kind of have to make a well-structured perfume first that might be a little bit generic and then start to kind of like twist it around to your taste by adding kind of these things and um, not paint the whole picture with them but kind of embellish it with them. And that said, um, you know, I don't want to be too harsh on this person or whatever. I think it's um, a nice attempt. And the other thing is, if you're not going for a fine fragrance, say you're going for like a candle or a soap, then suddenly this kind of composition becomes a lot more, um, you know, viable, if that makes sense. Like, if you're not going for fine fragrance, then you can go much closer to doing things like this, like doing a massive dose of hexyl acetate, for example. So again, it'd be interesting to know a bit more the context behind this perfume, um, but I try to give kind of my advice, or at least, you know, what I would do, um, if of course you want my advice on it. Anyway, so next we have a perfume by Puck, and this one is called Patchouli Breeze. So the note was, I'm submitting the first perfume I ever made. I made it yesterday, and I wore it all day. There's no chance I'll win the contest, but I want to be supportive since I've gotten so much from your channel in such a short amount of time. Thank you very much. A dear friend of mine asked me to make a wearable patchouli fragrance that doesn't smell dirty. Everyone hates on patchouli, but personally I like it. So here's patchouli breeze. It's an eau de toilette, not a perfume. Is that okay? Um, yeah, that's fine. So this one, um, the base note, it's simple, but it's nice. I mean, you know, it's a good, I think it's a good attempt for a first perfume. It basically smells like clearwood and ice wee super. And I think it's balanced, you know, reasonably well. There's a bit of an emphasis on the clearwood. 
but that's fine. I mean, <laughs> you know, why not? And it, but it doesn't smell bad. It, you know, it's it's just kind of a simple combination, and it works. Then again, with the top note. So I think the top note is good too. I mean, so it's got this grapefruit note in, and personally, I'm a big fan of grapefruit as a top note. And it, you know, it fits quite well into the composition. Um, I think it's balanced quite well, about the right amount. And yeah, overall, this perfume, I think it's an excellent attempt at a first perfume. Uh, it's really simple when you go look at the formula. You've only got four ingredients, which is uh, timber silk, ice wee super, you know, same thing, hedione, clearwood, and grapefruit. And pretty much the clearwood and the timber silk make up most of the perfume. And then you kind of got the hedione, which just kind of, I don't know, makes it pop just a little bit. And then you've got that grapefruit oil, which works as quite a nice top note as well. So overall, I think this is a great first attempt. Next steps would probably be to start experimenting a bit more with some mid notes as well. Not necessarily in this perfume, but, um, you know, you could do something very similar in terms of composition and, you know, start maybe increasing the complexity a little bit. But overall, I think this is, you know, a very good job for a first perfume. Now, next, we've got a perfume by Scott Paul, and this one is meant to be a floral composition. Uh, apparently a hint of bergamot and orange are quickly transitioned to a powerful aldehydic gardenia supported by naturals such as ylang, jasmine, slightly powdery, soapy and clean. There's one ingredient that needs to be substituted for another ingredient uh, that was not listed that definitely adds more powder and sweetness to the formula, uh, which was substituting the gardenia um, accord from Perfumer's Apprentice from for the one that I have in my collection. So, let's have a look at this perfume. Now, for me, the base under this is extremely soapy. Uh, very much, it kind of smells like soap to me, really. And I guess you can just about get a hint of some of the things like the gardenia coming through, but definitely say it's dominated by a soapy note. Then for the top note, again, I still think it's quite dominated by the soapiness. Though you do probably get a bit more um, of the slight kind of floral and spicy floral aspects coming through. So overall, um, I'm not the biggest fan, but I don't really like soapy notes. So I don't want to say it's bad just because I personally don't like soapy stuff. Um, but this perfume is very much in the soapy direction. I would maybe suggest you could kind of tone down that soapiness in favor of um, some more of those floral notes. It'll be interesting to kind of see those shine through a bit more. That said, if the idea of this was to have like a very clean powdery soapiness, then, you know, I think then you probably did quite a good job in that aspect. Again, I think maybe the balance could just be tweaked just that little bit. So if we go look at the formula, it's got, what has it got? It's got aldehyde C12 MNA. And I think it's possibly that that's dominating and giving the soapiness. Maybe some of it's coming from the rose as well. Um, it's hard to tell exactly. Uh, maybe it's some of the linalool. Um, but yeah, this one, I guess, um, it's not for me. But, but that's kind of what I would recommend. However, if you're happy with it, then that's perfectly good too. If you, if you like a, a soapy perfume, then yeah, then it does a good job at that. Anyway, now for the final perfume, the final entry, and this one is by Vanillin Chillin, and it's called Rosy Ozonic. So this perfume, uh, let's start with the base note. And I think the base note on this one has been done fairly well, actually. Um, so it's quite a soft, quite a relaxing smell, but it's also got sweet notes to it. It kind of reminds me of maybe like a, like a vanilla ice cream flavoring, that kind of thing. And you've got these ozonic kind of uh, aquatic notes in there, but they're also, uh, they go alongside a kind of vanilla sweetness as well, which is quite interesting. But overall, I think the base note for this is fairly nice. Um, yeah. Then next we have the top note. So I, um, I think the, especially the initial part of the top note for this perfume is quite nice, and I think it's because of this unusual twist on the formula. And it's got this, so this Cistri Hexanel Acetate, which is this kind of quite green, a little bit fruity note. And I would say it's unusual to have that, but it definitely, 
I quite like it personally and I think it contributes an interesting side to this perfume. In the composition of the top note you've basically got some kind of fruity aspects to it but then you've got these aquatic aspects and I think having this also slight green facet as well that's a bit more unusual in this kind of composition um, but I think it works quite well to a good effect. Now the only thing I don't like so much about this perfume is I think that the musks used and the o ozonic or aquatic notes maybe uh, don't harmonize together that much, at least in my opinion. And I've seen this in compositions before, but essentially when you have, I think it might be ambrosolide, though I'm not 100% sure, when you have that mixed with uh, aquatic notes like calone, especially when they're dosed uh, strongly, um, it creates this kind of what I personally feel is a bit of a dissonance. It's kind of, you've got this very freshness on one side and on the other side, you've got this kind of uh, thick powderiness and they kind of come together and it's almost like they're trying to do opposite things in the perfume. So on a personal level, um, I'm not the biggest fan of that, but um, overall, I think this perfume is like pretty good. I just think it's maybe a few steps away with kind of a bit of a few refinements here and there. Um, maybe, for example, getting rid of some of the more, uh, or some of the less fresh, the more powdery, the thicker uh, base notes and trying to replace them with something a bit more fresh. So maybe, um, I don't know what specifically, but for example, the um, the Trendseeker V2 perfume, that did quite a good job of um, having a very clean um, base note that also made use of aquatic notes. But that said, I'm not trying to take away from this perfume because I think um, overall there's a very interesting composition and it's got a lot of uh, different elements. Like it's got sweetness, it's got muskiness, it's got ozonic notes, it's got green notes, it's got fruity notes. So um, I think for such a complex formula, um, overall it's in quite a good place. Now looking at the formula, um, I also noticed it's got a bit of that hexyl acetate. Maybe that's part of that uh, fruity kind of green a little bit top note. I think that does quite well. Again, it's quite a high level, but I think it works in the formula. Then we have things like calone and floralazone. I think the calone, um, even though it's at 0.5% in the formula, maybe that could be toned down a little because I still think that's pretty strong for calone. Then I think, um, yeah, maybe that ambrosolide, maybe personally I would try the formula without the ambrosolide. And then there's also a big dose of ethyl maltol uh, at 3%, which is really strong for that. Again, even though I did think um, the sweetness, especially the ethyl vanilla note, went quite well in the base note, I would maybe try toning down the ethyl maltol as well. And seeing kind of the effect uh, those things have on the formula, I think it's maybe the, the ethyl maltol and um, possibly the ambrosolide, maybe those things together, which I see as clashing with the, uh, the fresher notes. But I'm not trying to detract from the perfume, of course. I'm just saying if it was my formula, that's what I would do to it. But, you know, it's still a nice perfume. And if this is exactly how you like it, then that's cool too. I think, you know, it's definitely a, a, good, a good job. Anyway, so that was quite a lot of smelling. Uh, that was all 12 of the entries. I tried to be as fair as possible when judging them. I did try them all on the skin as well in my own time. Um, but most of the time, actually, what was on the skin was fairly similar to what I experienced on the scent strip. So if you're interested in smelling these for yourself, of course, you can go to the link in the description and find that PDF document in the Discord. And then you can actually go and make these formulas and see what you think, see if you agree with me, if not. Also, if you do that, then definitely go and leave a comment to let everyone know what you think. Um, because obviously my opinion is just completely subjective and, you know, different people may think different things. So anyway, without further ado, um, who is the winner of the competition? So this was actually pretty tricky. Um, there were definitely a few entries that were um, up there in contention for the win. So in the end, what I decided to do was have an overall winner, but then also a couple of kind of honorable mentions for certain categories um, because I thought they did a pretty good job as well. The winner for the overall kind of category, in my opinion, was The Rose of the Woods by Green Slug. So that was the second perfume we looked at, and I just thought this perfume was good in so many areas. So firstly, I thought the smell uh, was really nice, this kind of uh, rosy violet smell, but it also had some very unique elements in, like the cinnamal alcohol and the undeco vertel, and these all came together to provide something that on one hand smelled quite familiar, but on the other hand, it also smelled very unique. It wasn't quite like anything I'd smelled before, 
So I think it had a really good balance and it was quite creative. And at the same time, it just performed really well. So the top note was nice. It faded very nicely into the mid note, which was still really good. And then at the end, the bass note, again, um, it was a bit different, but it still um, was a, a nice smell. So I thought it smelled nice, it performed really well over time, and not only that, but even though it was quite a weak formula, it was something like 8 to 10%, um, the final concentration, it smelled as though it was a lot stronger, and um, it smelled as though it was more like 20% or something like that, and I guess that's just the choice of the materials used or the way they were composed, and um, they just seemed to project really well. So yeah, this is the one that I wanted to give the overall win to. That said, I thought there are a few others that I thought were kind of worth mentioning for particular reasons. So, firstly, I wanted to mention the uh, Key Jazz one, the No Cardamom. So, overall, um, I think this perfume had kind of some problems in the way it was structured, but that said, I really liked the way that it had been so creative. I think the way that the rosemary um, was used as such a key part of the composition and some of those kind of forest notes. Um, it was done in a very bold way, but it was somehow made to balance fairly well, at least in the top note. And while I think the mid note maybe was a little bit of a mess and there were definitely some improvements to be made there, I also thought the bass note was very creative and I thought that smelled nice too. So I thought that had kind of a bit of a forest atmosphere to it. Um, but overall, the bass note, um, it was quite unique, but it smelled nice, albeit a bit weak. I'm sure that could be made a bit stronger by maybe um, adding a couple of things or increasing the concentration of just the bass note materials. And I think it must be down to that use of Styrax, which is something that's not the easiest to use, but I think that was blended in quite well. And then also the choice of kind of musks and workhorse materials in there. Um, so I would give this kind of like a most creative award if there was one. And finally, there were two more that I wanted to mention specifically, and these two were Blue Jeans by My Bad Again and Trendseeker V2 by J-Man. And the reason uh, for mentioning these two is because I thought the bass notes in these two perfumes were by far the best bass notes. Uh, they just smelled really, really good. Um, so if I made a best bass note award, then these two would probably share that. So this one, the, my, uh, the Blue Jeans, um, that one, again, I said this smelled just like something that I would expect to find in kind of like the perfume on a department store. It smells very professional. Um, it was mostly based around kind of musks, that kind of thing. Whereas the Trendseeker V2 uh, by J-Man, this one had a very kind of uh, fresh bass note. It was a lot more, um, it had aquatic notes, but they were nicely blended into the musks to the point where it kind of created a single um, note that just was uh, very nicely balanced and it kind of lasted, um, it just smelled very nice over time. And I think this kind of achieved the aims of this fragrance as well, which was um, to do with making kind of a fresher kind of men's cologne. So these two would win together, I would say the best base note award. So once again, if your perfume didn't win one of the awards, please don't feel disheartened. I think all of the entries were good and I think all of them had their own kind of strengths and weaknesses. And hopefully I've been able to provide some feedback uh, for people who are kind of wondering uh, where they can improve on their things as well. So um, unfortunately, I don't have any prizes for the competition, um, but maybe in the future there'll be another competition with a prize. We'll have to see. And what I'm going to do as at least some kind of semblance for a prize is between those uh, winning entries, what I'm going to do at uh, some point very soon is do a video where I actually go and break down some of the elements in those perfumes. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do yet, but I do want to look at maybe some of those base notes that I quite liked. And also I want to look at the effect of the undecoverto, which I thought was quite interesting in that rose composition, or maybe the uh, structure of the rose in the rose accord, something like that. I want to kind of try to break down those winning perfumes for you guys. Um, so all of us kind of together can learn what it was specifically that those perfumes did to succeed. So look out for that video coming up soon. Anyway, this video has already been more than long enough, so I'm going to head off, but I really hope you guys enjoyed the competition, and I hope you enjoyed watching me smell through all the results. Also, as I say, remember to check out the formulas, um, there'll be that link in the description if you're interested in looking at these for some of your own inspiration. And yeah, until next time, I'll see you soon with another perfumery video. I'll also see you soon with that video breaking down the winning formula. It might not be the next video I do, but I'm sure I'll do it very soon. 
So until next time, good luck with your perfumery and enjoy the rest of your week.